I bet you can't guess what we're working with today. Well, I dug through the shop and out of all those ignition coils, I found four unique part numbers. And what I wanna kinda look at today, I've just kinda got a temporary setup here and it's got an oscilloscope, a signal generator, and a power supply. And I wanna characterize the ignition coils. So we're gonna take one of these, just one at random, and we're gonna power it. And I wanna see what effect the charge time has on the output. Uh, does it have any effect? It, it should, and also what's the maximum amount of charge time? And if we make the charge time too long, does it self fire like some coils do? We, you know, that would be a really good thing to know. Um, and perhaps even how long of a delay there is between, you know, the signal and the actual firing of the plug. So let's find out a couple things today. So what we've got here is our test setup. Um, well, I have to wire it yet, but um, we're gonna use a, a spark plug. And for the sake of today, we're not gonna vary the gap. So it's just gonna be a fixed gap. Um, we've got our four ignition coils that we're gonna test. Our power supply here that can feed more than enough current for what we're looking to do here. Um, signal generator, which will allow us to drive these both with a variable pulse width as well as variable RPM. And our unfortunately only two channel oscilloscope that we're gonna to use to get our data out here. In fact, I should probably rearrange that so you can see the oscilloscope screen a little bit better. All right, that should be a little bit better now. You can actually see all the data that I can see and I've got the GoPro to give you guys a zoom in when appropriate. So let me just take a second, wire this for the initial test and then I'll walk you guys through what that means. All right, so here's our setup. We've got the ignition coil, we've got our spark plug, and our spark plug isn't directly connected to ground. It's connected to ground through this one ohm resistor, which means that on the screen here, you're gonna see one volt for every amp uh, across the, uh, the spark gap. And then the yellow line here is going to be the trigger pattern itself so that I can measure the width. And here you can see, so it's set at 100 hertz right now, which is 6,000 RPM. And you can see, so the more that this grows, hopefully that's not in the way, the more that the trigger here grows, the more current we get out of this. And then on screen here, you can see, I'm not sure if you can read it, but I'll be reading you guys off the value. You can see this width here is the width of the trigger. And this is the amount of current. Now to get the power, we're actually gonna have to do some measurements on screen here a little bit, but that's fine. So first thing we'll notice is even at 200 microseconds, we're getting a spark. It's a very, very weak spark, but at 100 microseconds, so there's still a trigger there, you can see. See, uh, we're getting no, nothing at all. So let's go ahead. So we can see we're still growing here on the amount of current we're getting. So we can see this coil actually maxes out somewhere between 2.9 and 3 milliseconds. And something weird is actually happening here. If you look here, see how it's taking more current? And I'm not sure if you can hear that, but it's going higher frequency here. I think past 3 milliseconds, we're getting a false trigger. So that's something to keep in mind. That's definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, that'll affect your timing table quite a bit. And more importantly, we can see, you know, somewhere around two and a half to 2.9 milliseconds, there's just, there's no extra charge on here. Actually, let's make this a little bit bigger. All right, so here we see our current curve here much better. Now, because we're too far zoomed in, this won't tell us here, but uh, we can tell 28% here is 2.8 milliseconds. And we can see, yeah, right about, you 
Yeah, right about 2.5 to 2.8. So I would say this coil right here charges at most three milliseconds, which is good to know. I've actually had mine set to five milliseconds and obviously that doesn't matter. So let me go ahead and check, make sure the other coils are the same here. It'll be a real quick test. Yeah, so this one does the, the same kind of thing. Once you pass over three milliseconds, it starts to get goofy. Now, keep in mind, this is an awful setup. There's a whole lot of radiated noise here. And since I'm actually going across a spark gap, it's making this, it's just worse in every way. So this was a diamond coil. This one here is a Denso and is also maxing out at three milliseconds. So that must be part of the spec, which would make sense. That's an important thing to spec. And here's another diamond coil. So this diamond coil seems to still, still max out somewhere around two and a half milliseconds to three, but it actually doesn't start acting weird until about 3.2 milliseconds. So it seems like it's got a slightly wider window. Let's try the next one. All right, so this one's behaving pretty much exactly the same way. So at this point, we've got our curve. So let's see, honestly, there's probably not a point in characterizing all of these since they all look very similar. So I gotta say, first thing I'm seeing here is I'm, I'm honestly a little confused. I was expecting, I was expecting the spark to be a lot shorter, but to be a lot taller. Cause what we're seeing here is we're seeing 60 milliamps for, I mean, this is a decaying exponential, but let's call it a triangle. Um, and let's see, we're gonna measure. So we can see it's firing for um, 1.74 milliseconds. So I'm actually gonna take a quick break here and I'm gonna go do a sanity check on this because this isn't the data I was expecting at all. Be right back. All right, so that was interesting. Um, it turns out 1.7 millisecond long for the spark is not unusual. I always pictured a spark to be much more of an instant thing. Um, 1.7 milliseconds is just an enormous amount of time and pretty much invalidates the whole reason why we're here. The reason for that is, you know, when you're really at the top end of the power for this engine and many other engines, uh, you're sparking, you know, 30 degrees before top dead center is a good kind of, a good base number to work from. And you want peak cylinder pressure to be 15 degrees after top dead center. Well, if you do the math on that with 1.7 milliseconds worth of spark, it means that at anything above 4,400 RPM, the spark plug is basically gonna catch all of the mixture that goes by the spark plug for the entire duration of that 30 degrees before top dead center all the way to 15 degrees after top dead center. After which there's really not a whole lot left to combust inside there. So it doesn't matter if we made this thing two and a half milliseconds long, it's not gonna matter. So um, unfortunately that means that uh, this post right here, yeah, that was correct. And now I feel like I understand why. But we can still salvage this. So check this out. I, I, I played with the settings here a little bit more. It was bugging me that it was kind of, yeah, things were getting a little bit weird when I went above um, three milliseconds. So I've got a much better view of it now. And let's see, let's go up to three milliseconds. So here's our three milliseconds. We've got, um, well here, actually, let me make this a bit bigger for you. All right, there you go. Now that should be very much visible on camera. So this is the entire spark event at three milliseconds. Now, if we keep going up, do you see what's going on? We're actually shrinking, we're actually shrinking the spark event. 
and it's becoming unstable. So I'm not 100% sure what that instability is, but uh, if we uh, bring that back out so we can get our, our length here. Three milliseconds, so this is 3.2 and it's solid, but essentially this coil stopped gaining anything after about 2.5 milliseconds. So call it 2.6, 2.7, heck 2.8 to be safe. And above three milliseconds, I mean, it just, it just becomes an absolute hot mess. So that's really good because I was charging this thing for five milliseconds at the top of the range. And I don't know what I was giving up. It's possible that I had some misfires at the top because of it. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, obviously it's still sparking, just not as much energy. And then the other thing to keep in mind, since we're here measuring things, you know, spark energy is really, really dropping. You still have a spark at 400 microseconds, but really I'd say, I'd say about one and a half milliseconds should be, well, yeah, I'd say about one and a quarter milliseconds should be the shortest pulse that we use when this thing is idling. And I would quickly go up to about two milliseconds when you're on the throttle heavy. You know, that's when it really kind of starts becoming diminishing returns. And then go all the way up to 2.7, 2.8 when we're at peak horsepower. So what did we learn today? Our goal today was to figure out which one of these ignition coils to use. And where we ended up, just as predicted by this viewer here last time, is... It doesn't matter. Um, there's, a, there's a video there in that link and I'll put the video link in the description and you can go check it out. It's a really good video. It basically says experimentally what we figured out here today is it doesn't matter. And we did learn why it doesn't matter is because the spark plug is basically on above 4,400 RPM the entire time that there's combustion in the chamber. And it, you, can't, you can't get better than that. It just doesn't matter. So as long as there's enough energy in there that you're not misfiring, you're good to go, which is kind of what we all knew already anyways. But what we did learn, interestingly, is I set out to figure out how to get more spark energy. And I kind of figured that out because if you drive these things for five milliseconds like I was doing, you end up losing about 20 to 25% of your spark energy. If you drive it only for three milliseconds, you get that energy back. Now, I did do some calculations. That coil's really hot. I did do some calculations and I ran it at different voltages. Actually, the reason that coil is hot is because I also learned that they will happily take up to 24 volts. It looks like they cut out somewhere around 26 volts, actually. Um, they'll happily take 24 volts and it gives you about the same amount of spark energy, but it'll do it on a much shorter ignition pulse. So I took that data and this right here, this is my ignition table, uh, my, sorry, my dwell time table now. Um, feel free to copy this if you're using these coils. I did run it on a couple of these coils here and they all seem to produce the same results, but all of these coils here are from either the 2AR or the 2GRs that I have sitting in my shop. And of course, there's a lot more motors that Toyota makes. It's possible that they spec to different things for the other motors. It would be potentially interesting to look at the 8ARFE, which is a boosted motor, see what it does, or the new 2GR FKS, uh, no, sorry, 2GR FTS, which is the boosted version of that FKS that we took apart a couple of videos ago. Yeah, right up there if you want. Um, that might have more energy, might not. Honestly, I don't think I'm gonna go digging into other coils now that I've learned what I have until I have misfire issues, and frankly, it's probably not going to be an issue until I go to boost. And at that, it'll probably be a fair amount of boost before I have a problem. So, so hopefully you learned something. I know I did. And uh, have a good one.